Brendan Fraser had a significant comeback with the movie The Whale, which restored his position as one of Hollywood's A-listers after a protracted absence. In today's video, we'll discuss why Brendan Fraser believes Tom Cruise's The Mummy failed, and that he's open to producing a fourth The Mummy film. So make sure you keep watching if you don't want to miss out on all of this and more. Brendan Fraser last played Rick O'Connell in The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon, 14 years ago, but he is open to playing the part again. The actor also has some ideas on why the 2017 franchise relaunch starring Tom Cruise fizzled. Frazier acknowledges in a Variety interview that he is unsure of the format a fourth Mummy movie might take, but that he would be interested in reprising his leading role in the plot if it felt appropriate. I don't know how it would work, the actor told Variety in an interview, but I'd be open to it if someone came up with the right conceit. In 2017, Tom Cruise starred in the Mummy franchise's relaunch. The movie was intended to serve as a launchpad for the Dark Universe, a shared cinematic universe at Universal. But it was so poorly regarded that its director, Alex Kurtzman, went so far as to call it his worst failure in life. Frazier has his own thoughts on the film and told Variety that he believes its failure was because it leaned more heavily toward a serious tone and wasn't as fun as the first trilogy. Frazier remarked that Cruise's The Mummy was challenging to create and added that their mummy had one advantage over Cruise's that he hadn't noticed in the movie, fun. That was what was lacking in that incarnation. It was too much of a straight ahead horror movie. The Mummy should be a thrill ride, but not terrifying and scary, Frazier explained. Regarding his other projects, one of several casualties following shifts at Warner Bros. Discovery, Frazier recently completed work on the shelved Batgirl adaptation, playing the villain Firefly, and called the film's cancellation tragic after its most recent acquisition. Moving on to other news, let's take a look at six of Brendan Frazier's best roles throughout his career so far. In the past several years, Brendan Frazier has made a significant comeback in the acting world. The adored actor has been gradually assuming more roles in recent years after spending years away from the spotlight and disclosing the sexual harassment he experienced as a young performer. In this recent movie, The Whale, he plays the role of a 600-pound guy trying to reconcile with his daughter, who has been estranged from him. It's one of his highly awaited performances. The actor has already received positive reviews for the movie, and during the Venice Film Festival, he even got a six-minute standing ovation. Although Frazier's current role is already generating Oscar talk, his prior resume is filled with standout performances and instances where the actor proved he could handle the task. Now, let's move on to some of his notable roles in today's video. So, starting today's list, we have his performance in the 1992 comedy Encino Man. Brendan Frazier's appearance in the 1992 comedy Encino Man, sometimes known as California Man, outside of the U.S. is what first brought him to the public's attention. The movie, which stars Polly Shore as Stoney Brown, Frazier as Link, and Sean Astin as Dave Morgan, follows Stoney and Dave, two high school dropouts who come across a frozen Neanderthal while trying to build a pool in Dave's backyard. When the Cro-Magnon specimen is defrosted, they decide to adopt him into their society right away. Frazier displays his excellent comedic timing, which is something that is frequently underappreciated. Is Encino Man a good movie? He masterfully captures the fear, confusion, and amazement of an anachronistic man, giving the role a surprising degree of warmth and vulnerability. So no, but it is a good one that has gained cult status. Next up, we have the musical comedy Airheads. Although Airheads received a lot of criticism when it first came out, it has now acquired a receptive audience. Audience. The band, The Lone Rangers, is portrayed by Frazier, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler in the movie, which also stars Chris Farley, Judd Nelson, Ernie Hudson, Joe Montaigne, and David Arquette. Even Lemmy Kilmister and Rob Zombie make appearances. The Lone Rangers take the actions that anyone would do because they are tired of being a nobody band and receiving no attention. To force them to broadcast their demo, they kidnap a radio station. Buscemi Buscemi has another 
standout performance as the vaguely nihilistic bassist Rex, while Frazier impresses as the deadpan and desperate band leader Chaz. Over time, the band develops relations with the radio station staff, especially the cynical and laid-back DJ, The Shark, Montaigne. Similar to Empire Records, they find out that the station is being converted into an easy listening one, which sparks outrage from everyone and results in a mutiny where employees join the Lone Rangers. Moving on to the next one, we have his role in The Passion of Darkly Noon. Frazier portrays Darkly Noon, a character who was raised in an extreme Christian sect, in The Passion of Darkly Noon. After the cult is attacked with violence and his parents are slaughtered, he is now abandoned and lost in the woods. He is saved by coffin vendor Jude, Lauren Dean, and his buddy Callie. When he is on the edge of exhaustion, Ashley Judd. When Callie decides to nurse Darkly back to health, a bewildered Darkly, who is unaccustomed to being around women, begins to feel an attraction to her that he cannot control. When Callie's mute lover, Clay, played by Viggo Mortensen, comes home, the situation gets worse. Inflaming the situation further is Roxy's criticism of Clay and Callie's relationship. Darkly starts to think his parents are urging him to kill Callie from beyond the grave. After Roxy commits herself, despite becoming close friends with Jude and deciding to move away with him, this culminates in the final act, in which Frazier portrays a man whose mind has been totally destroyed by his history. Continuing with the list, did you know Brendan Frazier also had a short stint in the medical comedy Scrubs? Well, now you do. Brendan Frazier's debut as Ben is the memorable cameo from the extremely popular and long-running sitcom Scrubs. Ben is Jordan's brother and Dr. Cox's former brother-in-law. He is a fun-loving but irresponsible man and one of Dr. Cox's close friends. When Ben arrived at Sacred Heart with his hand nailed to a board, he was welcomed. Ben and Dr. Cox first rejected the leukemia diagnosis that JD made during normal tests. Despite just making an appearance in three episodes, Ben had a profound impact on both the show and the viewers. He was a colorful and eccentric guy who took great joy in upsetting Jordan and getting into trouble. He continued to be carefree and positive despite his prognosis, but in the end, his resistance to accepting his prognosis caused him to pass away, shattering Dr. Cox's world. Now, we move on to his more recent role in Doom Patrol. DC television series Doom Patrol marked the true return of Frasier to screen. While he had taken a few roles here and there before the 2019 series, it was his role as Cliff Steele that truly put him back on the radar. While Frazier doesn't portray the physical version of Cliff for most of the series, his voice acting is an incredible testament to his skills. Cliff Steele is a troubled NASCAR driver who, after experiencing a terrible car crash, has his brain implanted into a robot body by the chief, Timothy Dalton. It comes out that Chief has several unique patients living in his home. These include Larry Trainer, Matt Bomer, a former Air Force pilot who is deformed and has negative energy residing inside him, Rita, April Bulby, a former Hollywood actress whose body transforms into a gelatinous pile of flesh, and Jane, Diane Guerrero, the main personality of a woman with many, many personalities and different abilities. Frazier plays Cliff Steele who battles with his humanity, his daughter's existence, and his longing for his previous life. His performance as Cliff Steele is both frequently hilarious and poignant. And topping today's list of Brendan Fraser's best roles is none other than his portrayal of Rick O'Connell in the Mummy film saga. Without mentioning his most well-known and adored performance to date as Rick O'Connell in the action film The Mummy from 1999, Brendan Fraser's career cannot be addressed. The movie has endured the test of time and is frequently considered one of the best action-adventure movies ever filmed. Along with Frasier, the film also stars Kevin J. O'Connor, Arnold Voslo, John Hanna, and Rachel Weisz. Evelyn, Weisz, a librarian and Egyptophile, is given a map of the mythical city of the dead, Hamunaptra. After persuading reticent explorer Rick to lead them there, they arrive at the location where 
Evie discovers the Book of the Dead and reads from it, awakening the film's namesake mummy, Imhotep. Vonslow. From then, as Rick is put in charge of guarding Evie and her brother and struggles to keep up with the terrifying undead menace, it turns into a mad dash to save the world from the furious mummy. With his earnest courage that could easily be lost with a new protagonist, Frazier is endearing and humorous and plays the part of a true old-time action hero who is beloved and believable. With that, we're ending today's episode with the recent news on Brendan Frazier. What's your favorite Brendan Fraser performance so far? Let us know in the comment section below. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.